At first glance, when I watched Diego's videos, I was like, like her poor dude, not only does he live in a mess of a house, but it is also haunted. I felt some sympathy towards the dude. His house didn't even feel like a house. It was more like a sewing room, so I made my decision to contact him in order to see if I could help him in some way or another. At least, that's what I had in mind, but as I kept watching these videos, I went on crying and crawling on the floor like a bug. Were these paranormal activities really that scary? I will get to that in just a moment, but I was in such a horrible mood due to this man's financial situation. He most likely broke your heart, isn't that right? You mean the complete opposite. This guy has a garage of his own, plus his house has multiple floors. If I were a ghost, I wouldn't hesitate to spend some time missing up there. Which will take us to the next point, the paranormal activity. Do you remember the precious garage we just mentioned years ago? Exactly. The door leading to it has a problem, and it keeps swinging back and forth on its own. How creepy. Now let's get to the next door. Are we only going to talk about doors today? Hold it there, champ. It's not all we have. But the, but the door that leads to the room that faces the garage also swings on its own. The dog was so confused when he saw this unholy, terrifying activity in front of him. How over-exaggeratedly scary. And how dare you call the man a dog. Don't worry, I was talking about his actual dog. Once Diego was asleep, he woke to a freaked out scream on his first floor. These screams were so loud that even my neighbor thought I was watching some extremely bad content. Not to forget the chair running and the footstep sounds.
¿Quieres que te escuche? No mames. Uy, se escucharon pasos en el techo. No mames, acabo de escuchar pasos en el techo. When I watched the video where the screams were heard, I felt like I was watching someone else because the house looked nothing like the one shown from the security cameras. I just realized how many floors there are and how poor I am. This next one has to be the scariest on the list without a single. Don't worry, I'm not talking about your relationship life state. I meant to say, without a single paranormal activity. Why? Is it a Karen being right for the first time ever? No. A guy, and let's name him Fred. I hope his parents don't mind, if they still exist of course. Fred was in his house in Switzerland near the Swiss Alps, which really made me jealous. Only God knows how much I want to live there. Anyways, while Fred was enjoying a cup of tea away from all the noises, all of a sudden he heard something. At first, he was like, this must be a miracle. I thought I had lost my hearing years ago. So he got curious, where could these noises be coming from? He went on investigating to see if he can find the source, and his hearing led him all the way up to the top of the mountains. At that point I thought to myself, well, maybe he was delusional. After all, he thought he could hear again, but this old freak. I mean, this old fella is just hallucinating. But after I shoved the biggest shoe I could find in my mouth down my throat, which almost choked me, but I'm used to swallowing big stuff because I eat a lot, not for any other reason. After I completed the video and looked carefully, I realized why Fred was scared. He forgot his way back home. But then there was a minute left of the video. It turned out that he actually knew his way back, but there are some folks in dark coats floating. Kaoneki bunker.
ništa ne vidim i dalje. Ovo je mrdnulo, ovo je mrdnulo, čekaj. Kada ih nisam budući na konkluziju, možda bih ih mislijeli za mjeru statuju. The ambience was eerie, though not quite sufficient to send shivers down your spine. It could very well be a product of visual effects, but it's certainly worth a watch. I advise people to never look back at anything. Once you go through it and pass it, never look back again. But what if you had to? Like, if you had to go reverse with your car, aren't you supposed to look back so you don't hit that innocent child crossing the street? Don't worry about him. If it hits him, then he has met his fate. But what if you had an exam? Wouldn't you have to restudy these lessons in order to make sure you forgot nothing? It's okay. Trust your mind in that situation. And if it happens that you can't remember something at the exam, cheat. And if you can't or get caught, then you have to accept your fate. But in situations such as the one in the next video, I will have to give you an exception to not only look back but to also reprocess the whole event. What kind of terrifying footage are you about to show us that has driven you to make such a greedy exception? Don't act overly dramatic. We have Jarek, a man of faith in his abilities to one day become the best taxi driver ever known in existence. That's too much to dream of, but let's give him a chance, especially since he was even interviewed. What does that have to do with him being a great taxi driver? Nothing, but when you accept a trip from a ghost lady, then you must be someone special. For two reasons, one being able to handle the terror of some djinn sitting right behind you, and second, that you were even one of the very few to have such opportunity. She opened the door on innocent man Jarek, he talked to her and then realized she was nothing.
sumakay kanina may sumakay kanina may sumakay kanina pero bakit na wala scout bar yung sabi may sumakay kanina wala If you were able to see anything from this footage when he showed us where she was on the sidewalk, then you have some great vision. But I wonder what happened there when the door was opened. Did he actually see someone we couldn't see? Just like the title on your screen says, it's a haunted place. What else can be said? But based on the way you wrote this title, it does seem a little suspicious. How is that so? It doesn't sound like you had enough confidence in the way it's written. If you doubt its credibility, or in other words, you don't think it's real. How shockingly unbelievable, but you're completely off point there. That's all I have to say, sir, because the only reason I wrote it this way is because I had no idea what to call it. Yeah, so how miserable did I make you feel right there? I sized you and made you look like a pitiful worm. Ellen in the next video entered the entire building in the hope of finding something paranormal, something that will send these shivers down this spine. Here comes the one who will fulfill these ambitious dreams of Ellen. It all started with that one freaking door. He went back and forth like a raging bull while a flying bucket came out of the socket. The door was like trying to practice and test these old rusty hinges, and I noticed that I referred to the door with a he, while the flying bucket had other clones that performed the same paranormal activity on Ellen's head. Also, the bucket isn't actually a bucket, in fact, it's more likely to be a bottle, or what used to be a beautiful looking bottle that was turned to look like a bucket with the evil power of time. How childishly described, but it gets even more childish, I mean, more terrifying, as on the second floor, another door slams shut while hissing and walking sounds can be heard coming from very nearby, but nowhere to be detected. What a ghostly activity. Hay alguien aquí. Buenas noches. Hay alguien aquí. Y enfrente de ustedes lo que acaba de pasar. ¿Hay alguien? ¡Miren! Casi me caigo, casi me caigo. ¿Hay alguien? Uy. Buenas noches. ¿Hay alguien aquí arriba? No me deja subir, amigos, ¿eh? No me deja subir. ¿Hay alguien aquí arriba? Lo vieron, lo vieron otra vez, lo vieron otra vez. Buenas noches. Uy. Buenas noches. No me deja subir, amigos. No me deja subir. ¿Hay alguien? Dicen que se ve algo de blanco. No sé. ¿Hay alguien aquí? Uy. Queremos que te manifiestes. ¿Hay alguien? Debajo de la escalera, amigos. ¿Qué fue la escalera? ¿De qué escalera? ¿De qué escalera? ¡Uy, uy, uy! ¡Uy! ¿Quién eres? ¿Quién eres? Debajo de la escalera, dicen. ¿Hay alguien? No hay nadie, amigos. ¿Hay alguien aquí? La puerta, la ventana, la ventana, la ventana, la ventana, la ventana. Qué machín está, amigos, qué machín está, se lo juro. Que se siente bien perro, amigos. ¿Hay alguien? 
Vieron, se acaba de mover esto, amigo. Se acaba de mover esto. Ay, 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 ay. ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Qué fue eso? No mames, me dio miedo, me dio mucho miedo. Ay, qué machi se siente. Ay, se me cayó la lámpara, amigo, se me asusté. Se los juro que traigo un chingo de miedo a subir, amigos. ¿Hay alguien aquí? Uy. Uy, 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 uy. Uy, no mames. ¿Quién eres? Se cayó esto, amigo. Se cayó esto. Una, dos, tres, atrás, atrás, atrás. Atrás. ¿Hay alguien aquí? ¿Escuchan? Uy, escuchan. Se siente muy feo, amigos, aquí. Se los juro que se siente muy feo. Muy feo se siente. ¿Hay alguien? ¿Escucharon? ¿Escucharon? ¿Hay alguien aquí? Vieron las manos, amigos. Acabo de virar unas manos. ¿Hay alguien? La puerta, la puerta, la puerta se cerró, la puerta se cerró. Uy, uy, ¿Dónde estás? Uy, se acabó de cerrar la puerta. Ay, 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 ay. ay. ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? ¿Qué es eso? Perdón, 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 amigos, perdón por asustarme. Déjenme cambiar la lámpara. Déjenme cambiar la lámpara. Fuerte, 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 fuerte. Déjenme cambiar la lámpara. Aquí se viró, amigos. Uy, bien, como les digo, pongo mis pies porque se escuchan ruidos. ¿Hay alguien aquí? ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Hay alguien aquí? Amigos, no dejen, no dejen de compartir. El bote verde ya no está, dicen. No dejen de compartir, amigos. ¿Quién eres? See that dog on Ellen's head. There was a dog standing on the man's head. Not like an actual living dog. I'm talking about the print on his hat. I felt like his eyes were about to move for a sec. What a scary thought. You might be thinking, what do you mean by questioning the type of paranormal activity you have seen in the next series of videos? At least you should think like that if you have read the title. Is it something we have never experienced before? How creepy did it get? What happened to the ones who had the sad fate of having been there and going through all this evil poltergeist all by themselves? How about I give you a napkin so you can wipe your tears? As I can see, you're getting emotionally invested in my made-up story so far. There was no group in the scene, as these videos were all taken from a static camera inside the house of one dude. And it was not so dangerous, just the cabinets and drawers opening and closing and the storage door opening for the toilet paper roll to come out and take some fresh air. The chairs are moving backward, and the banners and paintings are swinging. Objects were flying out and into the scene as if someone were merely throwing them. Should I say that again? I think even an idiot can tell if someone is handling these objects or not. All right then, that's all creepy in nature, I guess, but it's not something to be amused by. Act tough now, but let's see how tough you are when this paranormal activity takes place in your house. In all seriousness, the strange nature of these activities comes from the farting sounds in the background. I thought it was just some leather chair squeaking, but upon checking, the uploader says it's some farting ghost.
I realize the sound quality wasn't exactly pristine in all the clips, but what can you do when copyright claim music is involved, right? The uploader appears rather pleased with his innovative ghost haunting approach. He's keen on making us believe that ghosts can actually let one rip. I mean, they already have that ethereal, floating appearance. How on earth did he conjure up such an unusual idea? I don't know why the man who made the next documentary is acting as if he is some big deal. Are you jealous because he has confidence that you will never have? I couldn't have said it any better. I mean, of course that's not the case, but the way he made this documentary makes you feel as if he made the most dangerous trip ever. Trip, you say? So we are talking about visiting special places. Usually, that special place can only be reached by getting knocked out. But since we are talking about haunted places, let's see what we have here. Two double cheese with an extra large fries, but he didn't bring my soda. How disappointing. And when it comes to the next documentary, Martin is describing the night in that one heck of a haunted hotel, which is called, let me see what they call it, the Weston Manor Hotel in Oxfordshire. How bone chilling. I know, but it's about to freeze in moments. No, I'm serious. If I don't turn off the AC immediately, I may catch a cold. What's the story of this so-called scary hotel? The Weston Manor Hotel in Oxfordshire has a haunted history with reports of paranormal activities. The Grey Lady, a 17th century woman in grey attire, is a prominent ghostly figure seen wandering the hotel's corridors and rooms. Shadowy figures, cold spots, and unexplained sounds like footsteps and whispers have also been reported. The hotel's historical connections, including a rumored visit by King Charles I during the English Civil War, contribute to the belief that spirits from the past may still linger. Additionally, there are accounts of poltergeist activity, such as moving objects and doors opening on their own. While these tales are part of local folklore, they lack scientific confirmation. So Martin was only able to encounter a flying thingy, a hand tapping, and a clock freeze phenomena. spent, I would say, the best part of 10 or 15 minutes using every diplomatic skill I have to persuade a very self-effacing lady here to tell us about her own personal experience. What happened all those years ago? I was making the bed with another girl the other side and I could feel somebody just touch my shoulder and pull me around. And as I did, something to sort of drain from me, and I went cold. And the girl I was working with, she just said, are you all right? Because I just went completely white. And I just said, oh, it's only Maud. You felt someone forcibly grab your shoulder? Touch my shoulder and just like pull me around. Gently? Yeah, just like somebody would, you know. And it was a few years ago, wasn't it? About 18 years ago. I saw what looked like a, basically a plume of smoke drifting across the picture. And I, uh, I can tell you there was no smoke in that room. That's a certainty. Nothing of that nature. I heard a rap, sort of, you know, sort of a but not, maybe not quite as loud as that. I heard some scratching, you know, it could have been leaves blowing on the roof. I think it's approaching three o'clock. We've looked at the footage and we've all decided it can't be explained. Obviously it will have to be analysed. So we can go back to, to room seven now. Stop. Now, I knew it would say that. I knew it would be 54 and not 55 because it was actually 154, not 155. When I glanced ac across at the, my alarm clock that's controlled by a radio signal, it said 154, around about the time I was, I think it was just, just as I did the take. The centre of so much mischievousness. They, there's 
scratching appeared to come from, from around here somewhere. And the the knock, the rap, I really couldn't tell you. is room seven your secrets are not fully unfold I don't think this documentary was that lame to be honest especially that it was short so people won't get bored but it also didn't live up to the expectations I had what kind of expectations you know something like a flying object or some other stuff I can't mention in this video or I will receive an age restriction. The next house is called the House of Satan's Worshippers, and it has been named like that for a very strong reason. Is this reason also independent? Like women, are you trying to put me in trouble here, sir? I won't speak if that's the case. Anyway, what made the owner call it such a name? Was he trying to avoid any visitors, so he called it that and made it public, so relatives and friends would think a thousand times before they even stepped close? Well, you have some wild thinking right there. I will give you that, but I will give you credit for that only because it wasn't the owner who called it with such a name. Then, could it be the architects? Or the house designers? Or how about you give me a second to explain? Finally, the owner had nothing to do with this name. In fact, the house has been abandoned for a fairly long time. Maybe people were the ones who saw how it looked, and they based the name on that fact. You were so close right there, but it was our friend Jassim in the next video who gave it the name. The house does look a bit demonic with its decoration and overall design, but are worshippers really stepping inside to hail Satan? And who came up with the rumor that this community of people heads into such disgusting places to worship the devil? Usually, they have to do it at home on Friday nights. Anyway, as Juju got inside, here comes the wheelchair, driving from one side to the other as a welcome. You thought that was creepy. Then the flying Dutchman will definitely make you tremble. When Jassim went upstairs to see where did that flying cloth go, he entered a new chapter of paranormal activities, with doors closing on him, and secret rooms where he found a haystack shaking and sounds of someone running all over the place. He closed the investigation with a knockout. لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله أعود بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق حصنت نفسي بلا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله أعود بكلمات الله التامات بسم الله بسم الله بسم الله يا جماعة ترى الرسالة عندي أنا ميح بسم الله الرحمن بسم الله لا إله إلا الله شفتوا اللي طار يا جماعة بسم الله أعود بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق حصنت نفسي بلا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله سمعتون اللي يركض في حد أعود بكلمات الله التامات من شر ما خلق
حصن تو نفسی بلا الہ الا اللہ بسم اللہ بسم اللہ لا الہ الا اللہ لا الہ الا اللہ اعول بکلمات اللہ التامات من شر ما خلق حصنت نفسی بلا الہ الا اللہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم بسم اللہ لا الہ الا اللہ لا الہ الا اللہ لہو ما فی السماوات و ما فی الارض من دا اللذی یشفع عندہو الا بإذنہ یعلم ما بین ایدیہم و ما خلفہم ولا یحیطون بشیئ من علمہ الا بما شاء وسع کرسیہ السماوات و الارض ولا یعد حفظہما و هو العلی العظیم لا الہ الا اللہ لا الہ الا اللہ لا الہ الا اللہ لا الہ الا اللہ حصنت نفسي بلا إله إلا الله لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسر فرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤد حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم لا 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 إله إلا الله الكشاف يا جماعة بسم الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله يا جماعة الكشاف ما جاي صار فيه مو راضي يشتغل والله المشكلة انه ما اشوف شيء لا اله الا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا جماعة البيت ملعون خسما بالله بسم الله بسم الله لا اله الا الله أوه. أوه. He always has to be knocked out at the end. At least 50% of his videos end with a clean knockout for the fans to enjoy. Now, I'm not saying he staged it, but all I'm saying is that it's always possible to go out of consciousness in such haunted places. I'm pretty sure if you have been sticking around for quite a while, then you most likely haven't had a shower in weeks, maybe even months. But that's not what I was referring to. I mean that if you have been sticking around in this niche, then you most likely have stumbled upon the next video. It's a tear-worthy old video. It's a 16-plus-year-old video. And for my understanding, this video is creepy. That's really it. Is that all you had to say about the video? Not quite, but let me get into the story. Well, son, there is no such thing as a story for this video. Now you're getting annoying. Tell us something at least. Okay, let's see. 
we have a group of three young friends who, on the urge of their youth, if that's even a thing, were heading into this old, very old chapel to be more precise. So we are talking about abandoned chapels here, correct? Should I give you some extra points for the genius that you are? How are you able to come up with the answer? Anyway, they couldn't get inside from the front door, so they used the back door. Now it's getting really spooky. Visit. I don't see where that's happening. When they used the back door. So, as they got inside and got a really good look at the place, they found a piano. So here comes the sexy talented one in the group who will play the best song. And the trapped girl inside will be able to escape this terrifying, haunted place because that was the solution to break the spell. You aren't dreaming in the first half, but the only difference is that the talented one was actually a dark figure, not one of them. This is Jake. And this is Diva. We're at this chapel in the middle of the woods. Supposedly it's really haunted. Myth out or something. We're gonna go check it out and hope we find something tonight. We already went up to the uh, the clock tower earlier today. We nothing happened there, so maybe something will happen here. Yeah. Hopefully. I want to try to get up in that tower right there. That'd be, that'd yeah. be pretty cool. That'd be scary. Right. Uh, okay. I guess we'll try to go up to the front. Yeah, door over here. And, uh, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting you know, fucking scared. Yeah, it's getting pretty scary already. Holy <coughs> shit, holy shit. Look at that door. Holy hell. That is. I think it's like 20 feet. Oh my god, I got chills. Oh my god. <laughs> holy, holy hell, shit. look at look this look rope. Yeah. Holy shit. Oh. Oh, you do you ready? it. You ready? Yeah. It's locked up at the top. Is it? Hell yeah. There's, I know there's a back door, so I'm gonna try to bust through it. Look at this. Look at this. Check this out. Right on the side, about the chapel. Oh shit. It's like a prayer or something. Hero wants. That's that. Fuck down, man. Alright, alright, let's, let's go. Let's just, I don't want to be here much yeah, longer. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Right. If I like hold on to you or something, <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not gay. I'm just scared. <laughs> yeah, right now. If, you know, somebody watches this and I start crying. I that's what I do all the time, so it's not even thing big. Yeah, pussy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am not kidding. I mean, <laughs> you too, you are too. Oh. Is it? You think is it unlocked? I don't know if it's unlocked or not. Holy <laughs> shit. Holy There's a door open right Oh my god. Holy it's like freezing in here, like a cold spot or something. Holy oh shit, look at that piano. That piano gets scary. Oh. You go first. Oh, hell no, nah, man. I'm go first, go first. I, I got the camera. I gotta get you in picture. Oh my god. Dang, you got some chills. <laughs> oh my oh god. god, it's the... Alright, we're gonna go in this room right here. Oh, what's in here? It's like some like maintenance closet or something like that. Close that damn door, I'm scared shit. Oh, oh look at this ladder. It's like, it's like a secret door or something. When we try to get up it, should I'm I? not doing it. Should I? I'm not, you can go. Fuck, I am. No. <laughs> That just, someone's gonna fall out of there. I mean, sure. <laughs> God damn it. I'm around. I can't, I can't take this right Oh, here. God. I'm so scared. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Turn the light. Turn the light. Listen, listen. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Is that piano? Come on. Should we go out there? Is that door open? Is that door open? Should we stay in here for a second? No. We gotta see. We gotta right, see. Right, this is this right, gonna be. This is gonna be. Oh my God! 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 O
Alright, alright. Yeah, Jan made it. Alright, alright, just run, just run, just run, just run. Alright, go, 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 Oh god. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. You gotta go, go. What the hell was that? I can't breathe. I'm so scared. Yeah, I can't breathe for real. I don't see you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't know what to do. Dude. I don't know what to do. You don't see him, do you? Oh, oh, shit. oh, oh shit. shit! Oh 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 shit! They call that thing a ghost. This isn't even dark enough to be called a shadow figure. I have seen some with darker tones. Are you talking about humans there? Who cares about who I'm referring to? My point here is that this thing is too talented to stay in the shadows. I'm going to say something smart in the next few seconds that should make me sound like a professional to the vast majority of people. Back in 1953, after World War II ended, and the flowers started blooming again, and the birds are back at it with their tweets, before Twitter was a thing. In fact, before the internet was even a thing. So what the heck happened in that freaking year? Some railway's line was left to rot and dismantled. Is that the professional line that I wanted to say that should make me a genius? I think so. Grizzly Bear is on a trip to camp in that location where people said the lady in white is hunting. And who is that bit in white? And since when do grizzly bears camp in the woods? Did I say a grizzly bear? I meant grizzly gaz. That's as far as I know about this dude, plus the fact that he laughs at everything literally. You may tell him that his entire family passed away in a plane crash, and he will say something emotionally charged before he mixes it up with a laugh. But in the clips you will see, he is not laughing, he is living tragedy. Now the real question is, what did he encounter? He himself just heard the sounds, but Fendi was the one to see the invisible. So his girlfriend had some secret vision powers, you say. Freddy is not his girl, she is the dog. Not that he is in a relationship with a dog, I meant that he just has a dog. Let's call the grizzly dude Brian. Brian was hearing singing and whistling sounds, which he couldn't find its source, while Fendi gave the reaction of someone who is seeing a falling dude. I mean, a falling angel. I'm doing a bit of a stealth camp. Because you're not really supposed to be in these woods. But there is a spooky story that goes with these woods. The lady in white is supposed to haunt this location. It's an old dismantled railway. And apparently the lady who lived at the farm up on top of this hill, she hung herself down here. Now this is going back into the uh, 1800s, I think it was. Hello?
Hello? Even our friends will heard that. Hello? Come on, mate. Why did he have to choose the absolute worst spot for camping? But let's face it, nearly every camping location in this world is inherently eerie. So if I were to hear any kind of singing in that situation, I wouldn't be wielding a knife like a butcher. My gun would be blazing into the sky. Or to be more accurate, I'd probably be sprawled on the ground, petrified. I mean, I can't even handle a fly. I have heard hissing sounds before, but unlike the ones in the next video, I have never heard anything as such. So are you trying to say that you can hear sounds, and that you have heard hissing sounds before, as if it's something paranormal? Do you think we are dummies or what? Well, I couldn't say it any better. Sorry, I was just talking to my wife there. She said we should see other people, and she knows very well that she is blind. Anyway, hissing sounds can be paranormal in fact, all dreams can come true, and so do nightmares, if you just believe hard enough and find people who can make such events take place in reality with a little touch of magic, it can be money or post-production. So where does the next video stand in all of this mess? In this video, a group of paranormal investigators explores the Padre Hotel, particularly focusing on rooms 704 and 811. 
Where there have been reports of paranormal activity, the investigators use various tools such as EMF readers, motion-sensitive music boxes, and bells to try and communicate with any potential spirits present. During their investigation, they experienced several instances of paranormal activity, including the music box responding to their questions and a childlike voice captured in an EVP. In room 811, they also recount the story of hearing unexplained knocking sounds on the wall. Now that you know, you're good to go. So we set the paranormal music box on the entryway of the shower in hopes to detecting anything that passes by. Not waiting too long, a REM pod goes off. Uh, the REM pod is going off. It's going off like crazy. Holy <laughs> Look. The REM pod is going off. There's no electrical uh, interference. I'm going to turn on the music box here and try to see if there's anything around here. First, it's going to you know, get going. All right. <laughs> that is crazy. We need to eat. We need to do an EMS sleep right here. Look, the music box is going off. Is, is, okay, that's you. Yeah, that's it's fine, it's fine. You just do a sweep. Yeah, just do a sweep real quick. Yeah. That is crazy. A lot of... Wow. Wow. That is crazy. The music box is going off. There's nothing in front of it. Oh, I gotta take some pictures. Maybe we'll capture some pictures. Dude, the music box is going oh. At this moment, we captured something very sinister. Right after I said the music box is going off, we believe it sounds like an angry demonic hissing. You can hear the tone of it hissing being louder than my voice. This is very compelling. Could this be a dark entity that isn't happy we are there? Here's the replay. Dude, the music box is going oh. Shortly after the demonic hissing, we capture another compelling EVP of a man whispering. Here's the enhanced audio. If there's a presence in this room, please uh, mess with the, the bells. Make it go off, please. Right now. It's all over the room. You can just touch it, it'll go off. While we are quietly trying to make contact, we capture an EVP of what sounds like a child's spirit. We did not hear this with our ears at the time of the investigation. Is it asking us to leave the room? As I said earlier, and I did say something in case you wonder, I said that these hissing sounds were not something I have heard before. They sound so staged that even the video editor most likely called it a career after finishing working on the video, as he felt like he would not be forced to do something stupid again. 
Are you calling these guys fakers? No, but I'm calling you out, the ones who didn't subscribe or watch the next video on screen.